Oh my captain, it looks as though we're surrounded. Hurry up, men! We gotta capture these pirates! <laughs> well, it looks like it's time to use our secret weapon! Fire the proton torpedoes! That's a cannonball, but whatever. Hi there, camera. I just spent 30 minutes setting up. I was just pretending to mess around with this toy boat filled with a straw hat pirate crew. Why, you probably aren't asking? Well, that's because today we're going to be covering One Piece, the best anime that I would never recommend. Well, now I'm over here, so let's get this started, shall we? First off, if you haven't heard about One Piece, it's one of the most popular manga and anime series around. It recently became the best-selling manga series of all time, and it's written by Oda Eiichiro, with the manga starting in July 1997 and the anime starting in October 1999. Both of the series are still ongoing. It follows the swashbuckling adventures of Monkey D. Luffy, Straw Hat Pirate, because right there. he has a straw hat, and his diverse crew of misfits. Their goal is to travel the Grand Line, the most dangerous ocean in the world, to find the One Piece, the fabled treasure of the pirate king, Gold D. Roger. One Piece takes place in a world far different from our own. Instead of large land masses, everything is ocean. Except one strip of land called the Red Line. Hey, wait a minute. That circles the globe. Everyone else lives on islands throughout the North, East, South, and West Blue. The four main oceans. And the Grand Line, where most of One Piece takes place. The Grand Line is a stretch of ocean along the equator, where the One Piece is said to be hidden. There is also things called Devil Fruit. Whoever eats one gains crazy powers, like the main character Luffy, who is a rubber man. But if you eat one, the ocean rejects you and you are no longer able to swim because yes so on one hand awesome powers on the other you can't swim which isn't super appealing when nearly the entire globe is made up of water and that's the setup for this grand adventure along the way a lot of stuff happens there's friendship there's adventure there's fucking pirate shit going on this topic i'm going on is kind of difficult to get started on but i want to begin this by saying that i love one piece it's a great anime. I jumped into One Piece with my girlfriend in the year 2013, I believe, because she has been a big fan of this series since near the beginning. So together we dived into this massive show. It was a great experience watching it together, but it was also a journey through hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of anime. I mean, let's get to it right away. This show is not recommendable because of how long it is. If you thought that's what the reason was, yeah, that's what it is. There's 767 episodes as of this recording. That's insane. Sure, there are some filler arcs in there that you can probably scrape out, but how much is that? Is that like 60 episodes, maybe at the most? Cutting that out, you still have hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of episodes still to go. That's more than the entirety of The Simpsons. I mean, that's a pretty easy reason right there. Pure and simple, I could never recommend a show of this length. To ask someone to commit to watching this is ridiculous. It's a great show to binge watch, but there is a point where binge watching becomes a problem. Like, seek help, you have a problem. The issue is that I still think it's a great series, with some of the latter arcs being some of the best in anime. One Piece is this anime that just baffles me. It has immersive world building, great characters, epic storylines, clever action. But the anime also has nearly unbearable amounts of filler in each episode, with long stares, repeating moments, long flashbacks of something that happened three fucking episodes ago. For every point I can find of why I should recommend this show, there is another for why I shouldn't, like animation. Since it's a long running anime, you don't have the budget for impressive moments like some shorter anime like Fate Zero have. The animation isn't bad, but it isn't super impressive either. Now it doesn't need to be for what it is, but it just doesn't have that visual bite to it. The storylines can be a bit predictable, which if you're someone who likes something unexpected, you aren't going to get it here. Well, to touch on the story a bit, the early parts of One Piece struggled with trying to do emotional stories while cheating on deaths. For example, there are these early arcs that have these big moments where a character gets critically injured and you assume that they just exploded, they gotta be dead, right? Or they just got electrocuted repeatedly. How how can you even possibly survive that? Until they appear again at the end of the arc smiling and happy. That's just cheating, and I hate that about early One Piece. I borderline wanted to stop right there, because if they're gonna cheat on every big moment like that, then what's the point? If you know by the end everyone's gonna be okay and everything's all gonna be hunky-dory and the villain's gonna get put away and we're all gonna be friends, then what's the point of watching? 
Now they do turn this around and deaths actually happen now, but it's really safe to say the majority of the cast has a pretty thick plot armor on. One Piece also suffers from one of the biggest problems in shounen anime, which is scaling of power. What I mean by that is our main character Luffy starts out as a super strong guy compared to normal people and lower level pirates, but he eventually meets people that are stronger than him, people he can't beat, so he has to train and get stronger. Now, this power chart just keeps going up and up and up and up, and we aren't even close to being at the end of the series, so I know it's just gonna get up and up some more. But there is a point where you can no longer convey how much more powerful the enemy is, or how big the stakes are while still making it interesting. There is a diminishing return there. A great example of this done in two different ways is Dragon Ball GT to Berserk. In Dragon Ball GT, every enemy they face is just stronger than the last guy by insert number here. He's a hundred times stronger than Frieza! They don't ever effectively show you how much stronger they are, or what it means for our characters. So I, as an audience member, just assume, yeah, they're gonna win, it doesn't matter. And then they do, and I'm not interested. But in the series Berserk, they have the Apostles and the God Hand. The Apostles are these demons that Guts, the main character, fights, and they establish that they are far stronger than any human. And that Guts, who is by far the strongest and most skilled human fighter in the known world, able to kill a hundred men in a single night, can barely stand his ground against one of these. Guts can't close that strength gap. The series makes it clear that he is the peak warrior, and that there really isn't any way for him just to work out more or try harder to be better. Instead, his fights focus more on strategy or luck, and eventually when he does get to that point where he needs something more or he will lose, the series grants him armor that does that. But the armor comes at a price. The more he uses it, the bigger toll it'll take on his body. Add to that the fact that when he uses it, he can't tell the difference between friend or foe, it makes using it that much more risky. You see, it makes him more powerful, but it doesn't make him too powerful. This keeps the scale in check so we have a clear understanding of where everyone is at. As opposed to the One Piece or Dragon Ball method of just doing something big and impressive. But no matter what, the hero will win in the end. It makes the battle big, it makes them impressive, but they feel hollow to me. This is an issue I think I should dedicate an entire video to because it is a large problem in anime. But it is a large problem I have with One Piece. On the positive side, One Piece has great characters. Whether it's Nico Robin, enemy turned ally, or Brooke, a character added much later in the series. Now to properly explain what makes them great, I'm gonna have to get into some spoilers. But these aren't really major story plots like Luffy is Darth Vader's son, no. It's just about the backstory behind Brooke. So if you don't want that spoiled for you, I'm warning you right now, that's what I'm gonna be getting into. So, fair warning. Yay. Brooke is the one I want to talk about for reasons I'll get back to, but he's a skeleton that's also a skilled musician and swordsman. He's the former captain of the Rumbar Pirates, a pirate crew that entered the Grand Line over 50 years before the events of One Piece. Originally, he was just the first mate, but as the journey went on, the captain and a large portion of the crew got sick and had to break off in a vain hope that they could find someone to help them. It is assumed that none of them survive. Then Brooke took over as leader until the Rumbar pirates met their end after defeating a pirate crew that fought them with poison blades. So the crew, who was always lighthearted and musical, decided to go out with a song. You see, they had left a whale named Laboon, who had followed them from their homeland to the Grand Line. At the entrance of the Grand Line, they told him to wait. Laboon was only a child, and there was no way he could survive the dangerous oceans of the Grand Line. They told him that they would one day come back to them when they became legendary pirates. Brooke had eaten a devil fruit that would allow him to return to his body after death, so they all decided that they would record a song together and Brooke would take it back to Laboon. They all sang together as they slowly died one after another until only Brooke was left. He soon died as well. But eventually his spirit returned to his body, which was now just bones and his afro. He stayed on that ship alone for over 50 years. The rudder was broken, so there was no way for him to sail anywhere. Eventually the Straw Hat Pirates came along and Brooke found new friends and meaning in his life. It's an emotional story and Oda the creator is fantastic at these stories. They happen throughout One Piece and they're beautiful. But this gets to why I wanted to speak about Brooke specifically over other characters. Now viewers of the show already knew about Laboon the Whale. He was featured back in episode 62, and Brooke wasn't introduced till episode 337. That is 275 episodes between the two events. This right here is one of my favorite examples of One Piece's world building. Little stories take place, and usually in a long anime like this, that story means nothing. Like all those people in the original Pokemon anime that Ash met and told that they would come back to battle, and that they'd always be great friends? Yeah, you're never gonna see them again. But with One Piece, those events come back, those characters come back, and the actions of characters ripple throughout the world. 
The actions have reactions. What they do matters. And the ability One Piece has to craft these long, epic adventures is unmatched. What is achieved in the Rainford arc, without a doubt the best arc in all of One Piece, and maybe one of the greatest arcs in all of anime, happens because of the 456 episodes that come before it. I can't even begin to explain what happens in this arc. And to give some brief summary is an insult to it. It took 456 episodes to get to that point, and it takes 33 episodes to tell that story. It's a feat that no other series can accomplish because no other series can give you a payoff like this one did. Which brings me all back to the start of this. One Piece is the greatest anime that I can never recommend. I could never recommend that someone sit through 700 episodes of an anime. It's too much. But the payoff One Piece gives is well worth it. I would liken it up to a hike up a steep mountain. The climb is arduous and there are many moments where you're gonna feel like you should just give up. What are you accomplishing? Why do I want to get to the top? What even is there? No one knows. No one's seen it. But every now and then you'll get a glimpse through the trees. You'll see how far you've come, what you've accomplished so far, and you will realize the view will be even better from the top. And even if it isn't, you can always look back and say you enjoyed the journey. Thank you for watching this episode of Cold Hearted Complaints. I'll see you next time. been doing this for so long and yet it's come to this we feel you've been treating us wrong yet you sit there